Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode I am looking at unlocking some new technologies and I especially want antennae that can operate at Duna range. And so I'm taking a look and seeing what the maximum distance between Kerbin and Duna will be, which is just the two altitudes added together. So we're looking at 38 plus 54, so 92 million kilometers. And we will want some buffer on that, so uh, 100 million kilometers or more. So let's go over to the tech tree and see what we can do about that. We have the tracking station unlocked to level 2. Here, these are shorter range antennae. 2.2 million kilometers. Space exploration has some shiny habs, but... Uh, and some inflatable ones too. Uh, I don't see any good antennae. I don't know why these don't have their icons showing up. That's weird. Heat shields we could probably do with, but our return from the moon did not seem too bad off. Well, I don't think we're getting our antennae at this tier, and over here we need to actually unlock the VAB to get anything. Here we have a relay antenna, but that's still 20 million kilometers. Now I don't know if, because uh, I had bumped up the DSN range, I don't know if that's accounted for in these numbers here. It seems a little bit weird that the antenna rating is 8 million kilometers, Whereas for a level 1 DSN, it only gets 4 million kilometers? That seems wrong, doesn't it? And so maybe I shouldn't trust these numbers, but then if you send something all the way out to Duna, you really hope that you have some basis for trusting that it can do its job. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not obvious that we ha we even have antennae that will work, but we should at least aim to get them. So, we will unlock this technology so that we can eventually unlock precision precision engineering, I suppose. There are proper docking ports, but then, you know, our existing docking ports are pretty good too. Film camera. I don't know if it'll help a whole lot in our current missions. And what we're gonna do this time is launch a few satellites. Our active contracts are position a satellite in an equatorial orbit of the moon, another orbit of the moon, and then around Minmus. And we really need the money because now we need to look to unlock the R&D building at a cost of 902,000. So anyway, let me build some satellites. Maybe just one satellite to satisfy all of them, but you can never have enough co communications, so maybe we'll just build one satellite for each so that we can fill out our communication. Okay, so this is sort of a deja vu situation, but at least we have auto strutting this time, so they won't wiggle, hopefully. And we are using these probe cores because they have internal uh, communications that are pretty good, and uh, relay communications for that matter, see this data transmitter relay. It says um, 8,000 kilometers base, but uh, for DSN level 2, it is 1.2 million kilometers. So that's certainly enough to reach from Minmus. As long as the target is 8,000 kilometers away, it should work out. And anything around um, the moon or Minmus should be within that kind of range. So we're good. We've got a lot of scientific instruments because I wanted them all to do some science. We've got this new East Can film camera on each of them. The only required additional scientific instrument was thermometers. It asks for thermometers, so we've got those. We've also got the micrometeorite detector. And um, we've got this solar experiment sail. So it's some sort of solar experiment. It's not a solar sail, it's just a sail that has a solar experiment. I recall that from some of the early probes too. So we've got that, it sort of spins around extend panel, it just goes like that. I, I don't know, yeah, it is what it is. So anyway, and of course solar panels. And you know, maybe I should 
let's see how much it costs to bump up the solar panel quality. Ouch. Uh, yeah, that's expensive. We'll probably get other satellite contracts, let's face it. Um, the good thing about having a lot of different satellites that people are paying for is that uh, if they fail, we've got redundancy. So I've decided to uh, call this launcher Belka. Yeah, we've got the Decker liquid engine there and then four Merlin 1Ds and then three boosters. I went with Belka because first of all it reminded me of a Delta. But I didn't want to call it Delta. So I thought of a word that was close to Delta and I came up with Belka and I figured well let's name it after Belka. That's fine. And this clamp is askew. There we go. This is the first time I think we're using these launch stability enhancers. We have been using the other the mercury launch clamps right oh the atlas launch clamps i mean so yeah that's new now we actually don't want them there we want them there i've tuned down the boosters just a little bit so they last a little longer and we will see how this goes so save and launch of course auto strutting is involved I really need to turn off all the signal notifications for all the satellites though. It keeps popping up with them. And it always says that the signal was restored right after telling me it's been lost. It is done. And SAS on. Throttle. This throttle up. Okay. Nice look overall. And. Ignition and launch it's a fine looking rocket one reason I wanted them to last a little bit longer is so we don't release them during max Q and it looks like we will be through that by the time we release them. Do we have thrust tail off? We do. Well, not a huge issue. They are off. The sad thing about using the boosters really is the cost of the decouplers. Yeah, the radial decouplers are expensive. Use of the boosters means that this stage gets to do a whole lot more of the work. Now let's get the fairings off. Oh, that's the wrong fairings. Okay, well, let's not get the fairings off. <laughs> we'll wait. It's fine. Okay, separation and ignition. Now the fairings. I thought it was these fairings that we were going to be releasing. Okay. Uh, extend file. We actually have to extend the antennae on here, otherwise I think they're in the lower antenna mode. So I'll make sure to do that. And I don't know, let's uh, start this new experiment and start that film camera experiment. Seems new, this has new data to do. Okay, running. I don't know what the difference between running the experiment and doing the start scan is. No storage space. Wow, we run out, ran out of storage space real quick. We aren't even running that site thing. Yeah, all three cores are f filled with data already. Transmissions are happening. We're gonna rely on this engine to get us to the moon of course and then also transfer the Minmus satellite over to Minmus. Other than that uh, each satellite will deal with its own orbit around its target body. They're in pretty different orbits. We're ending up a little bit lopsided. Okay a lot lopsided. Okay that'll have to do. I don't suppose we could get one of those fancy Minmus encounter after the moon encounter things. Uh, probably best not to try. If it was gonna happen, it'd have to happen over there, I think. 
but it really requires the timing to be right and you can see how fidgety this is okay well that's like, that's a little bit more of a sign but hundreds of, I mean maybe a minor correction once we get to the moon would do the trick I mean if you take a look at that we could probably make it happen but let's focus on the main burden first there's no point trying to fill around with something that sensitive We have poor communications, but we still have communications. That's through quad sat A, which is there. Uh, no, which is there. Nope, there. Okay, so we have poor communications through that satellite. Should hang out, it should be slow. There's Duna there. Someday, Duna, someday we'll get to you. It's not the right transfer time anyway. Okay, throttling down. I mean, this is a high quality engine, of course, since we've only got one that we're relying on. So yeah, plenty of ignitions and time, but I went a little bit too far there. So let's see, uh, turn prograde again since the sun seems to be in that direction. Well, that's not good enough. Um, I mean, it's good enough to get to the moon, but not for the Minmus option. Oh, there we go. We have our Minmus option. So, yep. Uh, Minmus in 14 days. This looks good to me. We could probably fine-tune that even more. Oh, look at that. Looking good. I'm probably going to have to leave it there. It's, yeah. Let's see, we're sort of in a, on a fast approach though, with a lot of inclination and everything. How much does it take to capture? Oops. Mm, 264, nothing unusual. Okay. So it looks good. We can do that correction once we get to Moon SOI in 4 days, 5 hours and 50 minutes. Uh, let me double check that we're not crashing into the Moon thanks to that, uh, that maneuver. Yeah, it just brings us a little bit closer to the moon, which is fine. We like that. We like being closer to the moon. How's the science coming along? Pretty slow. Well, keep an eye on it. We are at 78.5 science right now. Okay, we got six credits for sight data. But that's uh, probably from some other thing. Charged particle data from some other probe. I think. Well, maybe, uh, I don't know. Seems like it finished the orbital sun observations, but it didn't give me a little notification down here. Okay, we'll do the maneuver and then release the satellites to do their own business around uh, the moon. It's sort of spinning around right now, though. But as long as we've got electric charge, it's fine. Okay, hopefully that got us our Minmus encounter. Yep, very good. So now, we'll pop off one satellite for the moon in one direction. No, you give me that communication back, thank you. So this is attempting to get into that light green orbit that's closer in. Okay, that looks like a good fit. And then retrograde, capture. I mean, we have plenty of delta V on this. And maybe a little bit of radial to fix that bit. And it should be, if we do a little bit of a tilt here, well, it better be satisfied with that. Okay, and how much is that? That's 277. We've got 1736 because I couldn't get smaller tanks than the Oscar Bees. So here we are. Okay, so that's got... Oh, we've got Kerbal Alarm Clock. Let's add an alarm. Oh, not, not for that. 
I want uh, to do this burn right now. For the next burn though, for the periapsis burn, we'll need an alarm. That's running. Let's run all the things now. Ignition. Okay, that's good enough. And that's the one I want the alarm for. And let's go sundown until then. Okay, we are recharging. We're still in range of this. Oh, I left a little bit of debris. Okay, we want the other one though. Let's point in a different direction so we don't hit debris. Okay. Alright, let's see what we need to do with this. That's the higher orbit. Okay, let's say we go with that first. Might need further adjustments, but... Okay, now that second burn looks about right. Okay, but let's do the first burn. Now let's make sure this micrometeoroid impact detector is running, and sure, why not temperature scan? It's all about no storage space, but it can take its time. Get some SATE data if you can. Okay, that's good enough. And let's add this alarm. Well, this is going to be first. Okay, this satellite is being placed pretty far out from the lunar, lunar surface, but it's still within the 8,000 kilometer range of this antenna. I mean, not including the DSN network, of course. So stuff will still be able to communicate with it, as long as they too have an 8,000 kilometer antenna. Okay, delete the alarm, and we can go now. It's fine. Okay, we need to take a look at the contract. Okay, it is satisfied. We just need to maintain stability. Obviously, we'd be we would have been able to do all of this with like with just one satellite or maybe two because I mean it's hard to go from prograde to retrograde around the moon. Not that hard though, but uh, we sure have a lot of delta v and could have done Mimus too, but. We want comms, so this is okay. Alright, that contract is fulfilled. Let's jump to the next one. And you know, they paid well. And science, because they've got scientific instruments on them. A bit of a duplication on that, though. In the case of the two moon sats, anyway. Okay, the ignition. Is it going to be close enough? Yep, it's happy with that. That's fine, and we just need to maintain stability here. 10 seconds. There we go. Alright, so this one's ready, and it'll be transmitting science as well. But let's make sure it's facing the sun properly. And I'll leave it like that. Let me uh, pop back over to its uh, neighbor around the moon, get that facing the sun, and then we'll focus on the mission head to Minmus. Okay, we have entered Minmus SOI with our final probe here. Too much Delta V, really, overall. Um, I think I'm going to crash this stage into the surface, but we need the probe to help us control it, because there's no controller on here otherwise. So, um, orbit negative radial. Okay, that should be a crash course, pretty definitive. So, separation. Separation. <laughs> okay, and then once we get over there, we can do another correction, but let's do this first. Are we going to bump into the stage? And no. Okay, good. Okay, that looks like a good enough fit to me. Let's see if we can do it properly. Okay, a little bit late, but ignition. The main takeaway from getting these three satellites into position is that we haven't had any communication problems, really. So that's been good. Important to us. Uh, we are up to 101.7 science now, so we can get another one of those 90 science 
slots unlocked. Okay, okay, there we go. We've got the contract orbit. Just need to hold it stable. And we have completed three contracts, reinforced our commsat networks, and of course, got some more science into position, scientific experiments that we had not deployed before. All good. All right, so this back to sundown. And now let's see what we do next. So taking a look at the contracts, the only active one we have right now is for the satellite around Duna. So we're not at the right time for that. Other than that, we've got a lot of Kerbals to ferry around, it seems like. I'm not going to do the satellite repositioning ones. So we've got a Fernie from Orbit of Kerbin, Nagel from Orbit of Kerbin, Verdon from Orbit of Kerbin, and then uh, Science Day from the surface of the moon we could get. And uh, this one uh, requires five Kerbals in the research lab. That's probably beyond our capabilities right now. Uh, to send that to the surface of Minmus, but uh, well, I mean, depends. But yeah, we'll we'll just say that for now. Let's set that aside. There is this intriguing two tourists uh, orbit around the moon, basically uh, itinerary. The problem is the a clause that says any passengers that are rendered unconscious due to G forces will fail to pay for their itineraries, and. Probably tourists don't have the g-force tolerance as regular Kerbinauts So I'm worried about that particular clause um, And it doesn't pay that well to be honest so any of the rescues pays I mean well it pays a little bit but each of them is paying about as much as a single rescue So and then we've got some of these double ones. That I don't know what to do with I I don't trust them. I'll pick up the rescue Fernie. Fernie is a good name. All right, tell you what, we're gonna try and send two tourists into orbit around the moon. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we'll t deal with Fernie some other time, but that's gonna be our job here. And then next time, maybe we will try and land on the moon. That we we're not gonna get a contract for that, but it's something I want to do. We've got ninety science. Well, we've got more than ninety science, but we've got enough for a ninety science slot j2 well tempting i haven't done any of the cryogenics yet some of these tanks look nifty though what's this bahal oh that's a nice uh, vacuum does it have enough it has a lot of ignitions too i like this engine this engine will be a good engine um it's only 11 kilonewtons though so possibly it could be too easily replaced by a whole lot of um, ant engines. The ant engines get 315. So um, I like the stats, but um, it's too easy to replace with ant engines, I think. Uh, though cheaper, because five ant engines would uh, cost more than this. 302 on this engine is not too bad. Um, it compares favorably with the Merlins. The problem is, I think the Merlins will be cheaper, the Merlin 1Bs, because uh, four of them would produce about the same amount of thrust, and I think they're less than a thousand apiece. So that's one reason I haven't used a whole lot of other engines. It's because the Merlins are just cheap. This one's, oh, well, this one's expensive too. Hmm. It's okay though. I mean, I would like to use them. LR-91, of course. Ooh, the Poodle. Well, we don't have anything quite like the Poodle. How many ignitions do we have on the Poodle, though? 14. Well, that's not bad. And it's pretty cheap when you think about it, actually. I mean, here we've got 250 kilonewtons. LR-91. Um, we've got half of that. And uh, it's the same cost, so it's got half the thrust. It's got less ISP, and it's the same cost. I'm, I guess BDB did not expect us to ever want to use the stock parts, because um, it's tough to justify that with the stock parts around. All right, I think I'll just uh, pick up heavy rocketry. I mean, it's tempting to get thrusters, though. 
because our moon mission, the moon landing mission, is going to require docking. I'm satisfied that we can probably sort out the RCS with what we've got right now, though. So I'll get the heavy rocketry. I might regret it. Okay, so here is our tourist rocket, and we're going for a similar setup as we did on some previous missions like the Gemagena, Gemini Agena thing. Uh, so we've got the Gemini pod, and basically it's got the core set up the same way. We're keeping the docking mechanism up there. We've got the parachutes here. Of course, we got that expensive aerodynamic nose cone, uh, some solar panels here, thrusters just in case, and uh, room for two, right? And then we've got a service module to ensure our return back, and that's got 518 meters per second in vacuum. So we've got a bunch of oxygen here for those tanks. Uh, we've got uh, food and water there, uh, under fuel on the fuel because, again, there's an imbalance. We've got 30 days worth for two now. Remember, previously we had only carried 30 days for one. Well, it's 29 days and nine hours for the uh, food. Otherwise, everything is good. Um, it says habitat duration is good enough, though it's cramped. We've got a Bell 70 liquid fuel tank. We've got four ant engines. Uh, we could have used that new engine we unlocked, but this time I'll go with four ant engines for redundancy, just in case one fails. And we've got another uh, food and water tank there, and then these solar panels. So decoupler, and then uh, the Bossert uh, balloon fuel tank there. And then we've got the two Decker engines that are tilted through the center of mass in theory, right? Uh, as we have done before. And then, I know you guys will like this, we've got eight of these gem boosters, well, that's what I call them, uh, ruby boosters, I suppose. And instead of using the Merlin 1Bs, I decided to go with these engines, Vulture engines, because, let's take a look at the stats. They give 140 kilonewtons for 920 cost, and they have an ISP of 316. They also have nine ignitions, a standard uh, duration and we're planning on burning them for four minutes and a little bit. So that should be fine. Um, maybe I should make them high quality. But, you know, doing that is expensive. I mean, take a look at the cost right now, 32000 We set them high quality, it's 2700 extra. And you know, the tourists aren't paying us that much. So they're, they're getting standard quality engines. Anyway, uh, we've got the... Uh, not these motors, though those also look like casters. Anyway, uh, these are gems, and I've thrust limited them so that, well, we need to thrust limit them. And let's make sure the staging is right. So we're just going to, well, we're going to ignite like that. Uh, well, let's put it down here so you can see the stats properly. And so going back to sea level, 3 point, uh, sorry, 1.313 would be really high. 1.31 at sea level thrust to weight ratio. And then in vacuum, that gets pretty close to 1 uh, when we separate off the boosters. And we've got about 4,200 meters per second there. And then it, we have 1,500 in this stage in order to uh, get over to the moon. So that leaves us with... 300 to capture around the moon, maybe 400, um, and then 1,100 to complete orbit around Kerbin. So what we want is by the end of completing orbit around Kerbin, we have about 2,000 left. So we'll see if we can manage that. Okay. If not, we'll just come back down with them. So, yep, we have to put the right Kerbals in the pod, of course, not these guys. Just Geofly and Fosky. Geofly and Fosky. Okay. Well, here we go. First tourist mission. A little bit high off the ground, but it's okay. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. Uh, we have a roll for some reason. I guess the boosters aren't on quite right. Well, we're spin stabilized. Um, I don't know how bad that's gonna be. It looks like Smart ASS can handle it.
We only have the gimbling on the two core engines, so gotta watch out for that. The Merlin 1Bs are 900 apiece, these are 920, and these get better uh, ISP and are about the same mass, maybe a little bit lighter. So that's what made them a little bit of a better choice than two Merlin 1Bs. Okay, booster set. Okay, they separated off cleanly, that's nice. We actually have to sort of keep up an angle, because our time to apoapsis isn't exactly going up, but we'll see. Again, we're very close to a thrust to weight ratio of 1 right now, 1.11. Strictly speaking, we didn't need the docking mechanism there, but it'll be good to test that for future missions. You can sort of envision that this is what we're going to use for a landing mission, and we're just using the tourists to test it out. And then it'll dock with uh, the lander in lunar orbit, lunar orbit. Oh, I've got this little part. We've got a engine mounting plate there, so I could put these two engines because these two don't surface attach, and I couldn't find the radial attachment point, or uh, or even a little cubic octagonal strut to attach them with. These are basically like an H1 engine, incidentally, but their stats are nowhere near an H1 engine stats, so I don't know. Okay, separation. We've got two deckers here. Again, we wanted 2,000 meters per second by the time we got to orbit here. And we're pretty close to that. We are in space, so I'm gonna bring out the antenna. I forgot if I action grouped them or not, so I'm just gonna... This is another one of those engine mounting plates again with the mop propellant dumped, since we don't need that. It's extra mass, the engine mounting plates, but they look good. And if engines don't surface attach, you need something. Initially, I'd put some Merlin 1B boosters on the rocket instead of SRBs, but this was cheaper. And again, I'm not sure whether they're going to pay us or not depending on the g-forces on the way back down. Okay, that's good enough. 100 by 88. We've got 1930. So it's gonna be tight, but it's doable. We will proceed. Okay, 39 kilometers. Seems like a good moon periapsis if we can hit that. Okay. Um, let me release these fairings. Not decouple it, but just get those off. So we can extend some solar panels. They're not going to catch a whole lot of sunlight like this, but it's better than nothing. Okay, we still have communication through Quadsat C. Let's see what the situation for that will be. Uh, well, it's right there. So if you have communication now when we're here, um, we'll probably have communication through the node as long as it doesn't go too fast. So we're good. I call it Gemtar because Gemini and this is sort of like a centaur in my mind, in a weird way. And ignition. I expect we'll use much less than 30 days worth of the supplies. 30 days is meant to allow for a rescue mission if necessary, as the docking port would as well. So. Because tourists can't get out of the pod. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, that might lead us to a crash course with the moon. Because we overburned, yeah. Um, let's go orbit retrograde and use some of that RCS. There we go, uh, that's good enough. 89 kilometers will be fine. How much do we need to make orbit? Oh, that's got an inclination to it. Um, let's not have an inclination. Everything should be nice and equatorial. So a relatively tight orbit around the moon will require uh, 300, let's say. So that sh shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so we're gonna do this correction. Hopefully we have enough electric charge for the dark bits of this. Crossing the radiation belt. 
Okay, let's orient some solar panels to the sun. That's why we had to get the fairings off, because we're retaining this stage right now. Oh, coronal mass ejection. So we have to point butt end to the sun, I think uh, Sir Mortimer said. So, that's sun up. Let's see if that helps. I mean, I don't really care about tourists getting irradiated, but nothing in the contract said they had to avoid radiation. They've already got 2% radiation, though. But I didn't put any shielding on this. Well, the storm should have passed by now, given the duration. And 3% radiation now. So, okay. Was it better? Maybe. I don't know. Quite far out from Kerbin now. I hope they're enjoying the view. I think we'll just use the mob propellant for this. Okay, on to the moon. Okay, we are in Mooner SOI. We should have communication at periapsis. All right, getting ready to make orbit here. Okay, ignition. Well, surely that's a good enough orbit around the moon. Well, let's verify, yes, the tribal itinerary is satisfied. It's really all about the g-forces at this point. Okay, so then it didn't say that we had to keep them in orbit for a very long time, and for the sake of avoiding electric discharge at the night time, I mean, it shouldn't be any problem. The electric charge should be fine and everything, but it's just a hassle. We will bring them back. The service module certainly would have had enough Delta V to do it on its own, but we'll start the journey off with the Decker engines. Okay, we are recharging. They're in a happy little orbit. So this will be a good system for future missions. I'm hoping for a double lunar orbit rendezvous situation. But the lander is actually going to be heavier than this, right? Because this only has 500 meters per second here. The lander is going to need much more than that. The pod for the lander might be lighter, but it's going to need a lot more fuel. So we'll probably need bigger boosters for the lander at least. So the plan is to send uh, this over here and the lander separately. Then the lander docks with this in lunar orbit. It's basically a double lunar orbit rendezvous. Okay, ignition. Separation and ignition. Communication should be very good. We're, we've got a direct line back plus a satellite helping. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's see how it is around the Earth. Uh, 30 kilometers. We wanted 26, I think. Okay, that'll be fine. I don't know how the G-forces is going to be on them, but this is an okay orientation. Mm, the direction of our ejection sort of caused problems for electric charge, but we're back. We can't see the moon, though, unfortunately. Well, you can sort of see a tiny crescent there, a little bit of an arc of the moon. As far as our supplies are concerned, we've got uh, three days and ten hours till we get back. Uh, we've used basically five days, so there's 25 days left, plenty of margin for a potential rescue if we needed to. Okay, right around here-ish we'll do all the business. So, there's Kerbin. Parachute, make sure it's the right height. And then, deploy. I guess we could decouple something or another. We'll just bring it all back. I think we did that before, right? 
I don't know about this decouple. I assume it decouples off the nose cone, the nose docking mechanism, but I'm not sure. Okay. We'll chart. We'll keep charging up until we're a little bit lower. Okay. So orbit normal. Verify that that's that. Okay. Verify that we have food, water, and oxygen. We do. Separation. Okay. I like the antennae sticking out below that. Um, surface negative. And I'll go like this. With our communication line being through that location, I think we can turn off the Commutron 16s to save them. Well, now we just get to see what happens. I'm going to turn on the mob propellant in case it needs it. I doubt it, but just in case. We are in the atmosphere. Um, something blew up. I think there was a decoupler there. Heat shield's pretty red. But we've seen that before. I don't know how red is bad red. Service modules exploding. Not too sure about that explosion sound. Okay, plasma blackout. Just have to worry about their G forces. Yeah, I think when changing up the vessel using the old craft file, I accidentally left a decoupler in there and basically embedded in the heat shield. It would have been the decoupler for uh, Oscar B class service module. Well, we're getting those G-forces. Come on, don't black out. Honestly, if at least Fosky manages to not black out, we'll be good. We'll have made money. Uh, Geofly blacked out. G-forces are actually going down. Okay, I think Fosky is safe. Stupid Geofly, but anyway. Yeah, um, the cost of the mission was 30000 and Fosky, uh, the end payment is 40000 and then they're also paying 12000 each for each bit of it, so that's 24000 in addition. Not the most lucrative contract ever, but we were also testing out the hardware and the whole setup for future missions. Plunging through the clouds here. Check on their radiation. 8%. 8% and 7%. A bit rough, but again, no shielding on here. Okay, yeah, no, we, okay, it's fine. Don't, don't use the art. Okay, whatever. Recover. Well, there you have it. Our first tourist mission to the moon. We're practically Elon Musk at this point. Um... As far as payments are concerned, um, he passed out, Geofly passed out, but Fosky was satisfied. Oh, I think we might have gotten the money from Geofly, I'm not clear. Anyway, so yes, it has been done. Next time, maybe a landing on the moon, we'll see. With that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.